Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Uh, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for this uh, panel. I, I've, actually, my questions are directed to Ms. Kingo, just because we, we don't get you here enough. One is, uh, I, I asked Jonathan Pershing of the U.S., the new U.S. Uh, uh, climate official, about aviation and shipping being excluded from the Paris Accord. And I wonder, do you think that as the Global Compact, this is particularly industries that, that what would be the impact, you can say, of, of the, with the call you're making today on those two industries? And I also, I have to ask you because uh, there's been, as you know, there's, a, there's been an, an inquiry within the UN uh, following the indictment of John Ash, the former PGA. And the reason I'm asking you is that in the, in the OIOS audit that's supposed to be public today, it says that one of, his enti one of the entities involved World Harmony Foundation is still a member of the Global Compact. And I wanted to explain how six months after an indictment, a company can still be in this UN body. And also, if you can explain why a Global Compact official who attended Englap Sang's event in Macau kept, an iPad, uh, kept a, a donated iPad and said that it's his right to keep it, how is that consistent with the Global Compact principles of transparency and, and non-corruption? Let's Thank keep it to the well, we have three requirements. Right. Three times they've said ask Global Compact, so that's mm. the question. Okay. Well, um, I think that we are here to talk about climate today. So, so let's focus on, on your question around aviation and shipping. I mean, um, in the compact, we have several companies that are in the shipping and aviation area. Um, I think um, this, the, the message we are making today will be very encouraging and will also be challenging. And uh, my experience is that that is what companies like to have from organizations like the Global Compact. Um, we are trying to interpret the trends that are in society and formulate them into aspirations and standards for companies. And this is also what we have done with this uh, carbon pricing level internally in businesses for $100. And we think it will help uh, making the carbon issue part of uh, business models and part of putting the balance sheet together for companies. And that is what we will need to do going forward anyway. Thanks. 